Welcome everyone. It's a new month and this is the first day of the month. Asian server have ad updated with the Paimon shop. So if you guys didn't know, there is a little Paimon shop. I'm sure most of you know about this. So come to Paimon bargain shop and you can see the start dust and start clinter. So before we start anything, I'll quickly cover you guys how to get Stardust and Star Glinter. Those are come from when you go with a wish system. Each time you get a 3-star weapon, you will be getting a Stardust. When you get 4-star and 5-star weapon, you'll be getting Star Glinter. Also, when you get duplicates of characters, you'll be getting Star Glinter. So Stardust are the common items we get. Star Glinter are more rare. So what you can see is I have about a thousand Star dust and 42 star glinter what i recommend for star dust the must buy every month for star dust are the fates those will refresh every month and they're the best things like what i'm doing is basically i earn myself 1600 primal gems by buying those two and what i've spent is i spent about 700 star dust so basically it's like, it's like a redemption system you spend your currencies to wish and then you get the dust because you don't get anything good then you can buy more of those keep in mind those do not refresh a lot or they only refresh every month so make sure make sure guys you buy them every month and if you guys are in europe or NA, double check before the shop resets if you have bought them or not but if you don't have enough of the stardust it's okay so don't have to force it it's more like a it's more like a you know reward system now it's the more important part what's in the star glinter shop and what should we buy so previously, I think we had Ember, we had Razor. Now we have Burnett and Lisa. Lisa, where well, most of us do have Lisa. So I wouldn't say that you need to unlock the full constellation of Lisa. There's so many electric heroes and so many electric support, like good like Fizzle. So Lisa is probably not the biggest thing. If you do have spare Star Glinter, keep in mind it's a spare one. I only have 42, so I probably won't buy Burnett. But in the future, if I want Burnett with one Burnett or Burnett Constellation 1, it's not bad. We're focusing on the characters here because those are the most important. Let me show you my Burnett and I will tell you why he is a potential buy. Before I was like, yeah, Burnett just doesn't do much. So when you come to Burnett's ultimate, which is Fantastic Voyage, what he does is he's going to heal everyone up to 70% of the maximum HP based on his HP. And also, he's going to give them bonus attack percent. So what you're going to see is he's going to heal them with healing up to 70% of the whoever's in there with max HP. He's going to have 233 skill percent damage. And also, he's going to give everyone 56% bonus attack on his attack, which is very, very good skill, actually. One of the best support skills. So 60 energy, 12 second duration, 15 second cooldown. It's a pretty nice one. And why would you want a copy of him is for that particular skill. After that, if you're going for the second constellation of Burnett, what you're going to get is the attack increase no longer has HP restriction. You also get 20% more base attack. So from 56% to 76% base attack added to the whole team from Burnett's attack. But that said, guys, there is no rush in buying him because, you know, he's a support and he requires a lot of resource to be... How should I say it? He requires a lot of resource to be strong. He requires a good weapon. He requires all the attack pieces for the artifact set. He also needs to be high level. So he is like an end game support. I only look into him after adventure level 45 when I have finished my two teams. Or if I'm just missing one person for the two team. The shop is not going to go anywhere. And what that means is all the items here are 30 days. So it just started today on Asia. And... Would you buy the Intertwined Queen of Fate? I would not recommend because those are so rare with the Star Glinter. It's Stardust, we can already buy those. And in the Stardust version, it's a must buy. In the Star Glinter, I wouldn't recommend going for those two because there's so many things you cannot purchase anything else. So our previous video, which I just posted about the information with Switch and PS and lots of the news for the day, what happened was Jax here remembered, reminded me that have you look at the shop update and the characters we can buy. So that's why I started to talk about the characters first, guys. After that, what I want to talk about are the weapons. What you're going to see are five different weapons, very similar to the Battle Pass weapons. Those weapons are unique or exclusive for the shop. And let's have a quick look of each. For the Black Cliff Sword, you're looking at critical damage of sap stats and also... For the Black Cliff Sword, 
you're looking at a one hand sword with critical damage or sap stats and also flat attack which is 42 or 44 which is quite high so after defeating enemy attack increase by 12 percent for 30 seconds stack up to three times keep in mind guys if you do invest in those weapons you're probably going for rank six quite quickly because you can buy three of them at once and you could have bought three last month and could have bought three this month so could have had maximum ranking but that is for most who are a little you know who are a little who are a little wealthy with resource who had enough glinter for most of us we probably won't have enough for a lot so we're probably looking at one or two of those so this sword is not bad but if you have seen our battle pass video with the battle pass sword i believe that is a little stronger critical damage is nice but we need critical rate first Regardless, this is quite a powerful item in cleaning up small monsters or monster camps because each time you clear monsters, you get attack damage boost and you can even get higher. We're looking at 12% for now. At rank 6, we're looking at 24%. So with 3 stacks, you're looking at 72% attack increase at the maximum ranking. The stack does not refresh. So what that means is you have to kill multiple small monsters quickly. It is probably not the best item if you're going for boss fights, you know, if you're going for big monsters. And similarly, I think all of the weapons here have the same special effect. That's why we touch that on detail. You can see all of the weapon has critical damage sap stats and decent attack damage. This one's only 42. So this is a two-hand sword. And similarly, you can see the lens have critical damage. Lens usually have the best <laughs> critical damage of the sap stats. I remember for the battle pass one, it had 8% critical rate. This one has 12% critical damage. Same as before, the same attack specialty. And similar for the catalyst, for a quick look at it. Yep, this one's the same, 12% critical damage as well. And finally for the bow, we're looking at 8% critical damage, 44 attack, and the same stats. Now, when would you go for those items? I will not say you go for those items as your first gear item for your strongest character. Because for those characters you build as a main character, like the Luke, or maybe Kachin, or even Xiaoling, those characters want stronger items and those items has to be invested health for everything if you're required to kill monsters to get high attack it's kind of too situational you don't want to keep yourself in a situational position where you are limited to how you can gain damage and this is the downside of those weapons so i wouldn't recommend going for those weapons unless you're quite wealthy and you just want to get maximum level of those to clear up small monsters we can also touch up on the other items but guys those are not worth it. If you're just starting the game, you have a bit of currency, if you're short on those items, just wait and you can farm those monsters. Those are easily acquirable and those doesn't even cost reason. You can just kill those monster mobs. I do have a guide to show you how to farm those regularly. So never, never go for those. Those are like, I guess, those are baits and traps. And talking about baits and traps, I wouldn't recommend going for the adventure experience, the enhancement, or the Mora if you're really short on Mora and you have too much stack dust. But most of us don't need Mora that badly that we want to spend stack dust. Because the trade off is you need 700 a month for those intertwined fates and acquainted fates. So the Mora, you can't exchange Mora into fates, right? So, but you know, the other way works. So it's better we save the stack dust. And for the stack glitter, the only thing I think is worth it are the heroes or the characters then move into the weapons and then maybe the fates if you have a lot of those now before i finish there's a small thing i want to touch up on yesterday we talked about the battle pass weapons and the comparison and during the comparison i made an update for the christian spike i want to make a special you know talk about it for now so the christian spike is a craftable blacksmith weapon and after reading the comments and notes after you know looking up a little bit i realized how powerful the christian Crimson Spike is. So what's happening is the Crimson Spike is craftable. So if you come into your inventory and you, if you look at how many of those prototype lenses you have, you should have at least a few because those I have two here. Those uh, can be sold in the shops and those can be looted from the weekly bosses. The choices between the crafting materials, uh, let me have a look. Let me show you guys over here. So the choices between the craftables are the prototype grudge, which is absolutely not great. But Crimson Spike apparently after having a look, it is top tier item because the additional attack 20% as damage for 5 seconds, this attack does not have a trigger cooldown. So you know how there's like, you know, there's a lot of things that have a trigger cooldown every 12 seconds, every 12 seconds. This one doesn't. Oh, what's that? Let's, let's have a look at that too. So this one does not. And what that means is you can 
trigger this as frequently as you can with a Lancer, who usually have that quick attack speed, like Shaolin, like Xiao and Zhongli that's coming, quick attack speed, this additional attack triggers, and this can also crit. So you're doing like additional instance of damage. And the base attack is quite high with 44, and also gives physical damage bonus. If you're going for a physical damage build, if you're getting some elemental orbs, you're doing some great things, and this can be very powerful. So just an update guys, if you're building a Lancer, Crescent Pike is actually one of the best items for the Lancers. And also, as I was showing the Crimson Pike, I saw there's another image update for the Skyward Pike Spine. So increased critical rate, increased normal attack speed, additional normal attack charge, his enemy trigger vacuum blade. Oh, this is like the bow that triggers the vacuum. But this is a this is a five star item with attack forty eight, which is the one of the highest attack, and it's recharge, which is not great. So critical rate. If this was critical rate, that would have been a really good item. But currently is not critical rate for sap stats and also at critical rate and attack speed is okay so in the end this is more like a controlling poem what you can use for is i think zonli and shao can use more effectively and shaolin can so just for the energy recharge but if that was more offensive this would be an incredible poem you can see the comparison poems we're looking at attack substats and critical rate substats i still think the jade wind spear is one of the strongest because of the critical rate and also increasing attack to summarize this Paimon shop guide for the weekly waste set, what you want to buy guys, the must buys for the month is definitely the inter team fleet and acquainted fleet in the start dust section. And after the start connectors, I recommend always going for the character first, then consider the weapons, then consider for the inter team fleet and acquainted fleet after. And also, do not guys, do not buy those upgrade materials. If you're new, if you're just getting into the game, you get so much of those everywhere and they're free. They also don't require any reason, so those are the baits.